In this video, I'm going to show you an easy to make mistake that can mean the difference between this and this. Now, I know about this mistake because I just made it myself recently in a video where I was demonstrating my go-to technique for balancing an image with just one control. But I overlooked one tiny little step in my setup during that video, and as a result, I ended up with a nasty visual artifact, kind of like this one that we're looking at right now. So let's talk about the mistake that I made and what you can do to ensure you never make the same one. All right, let's dive into Resolve, and I want to start by very briefly reorienting ourselves to the discussion that we were having when this mistake came about in the first place. To do this, let's go back over here to shot number one for now, and we're going to talk about the way that I like to balance my image. Here's what I like to do. I have a dedicated node for balance, as you can see here, and what I'm going to do is right-click on this node and click on my gamma and set this to linear. Now, for this to work properly, you need to have your color management properly set up, which I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you do. If not, we've got lots of great content here on the channel for you to brush up on that subject. So with my gamma set to linear, things from here become really, really simple. All I'm going to do to balance my image out is use my gain trackball to move the balance where I want it to go. Super simple, super clean, and get great results really, really fast. Okay? This is a huge improvement over the way that I learned to balance the image using something like Lift, Gamma, and Gain, which is three separate controls, more overwhelming, more room for error, also not as clean as Linear Gain, as it turns out. It's even better than working Offset, because Offset is going to have an uneven response in shadows, midtones, and highlights, and often will require bouncing over to something like Lift in order to get an even level distribution of whatever color balance you are attempting to introduce into the image, okay? So it's a huge upgrade, it's a great way of operating, but something interesting happened when we were demoing linear gain in this prior video. What happened is I was on a shot, kind of like this one, where I had a quite cool world, and I had a very, very red accent within that world. And so what I went to do is, with my gamma set to linear, I started warming things up by moving my trackball northwest. And you can see this little bullseye here inside of my gain is moving up toward the northwest as I adjust my control surfaces trackball here. And while the image was looking pretty decent in that demonstration, I ended up with a little traffic light, kind of like this red flare that we're seeing here, completely nuking and going crazy and looking insane. And I didn't even notice it at the time because it was small enough and I was looking at the overall image. And frankly, I'm not used to having to look out for problems in the adjustments that I make because I'm used to getting clean behavior out of the tools that I select and use on a regular basis. I'm used to linear gain behaving itself, but in this video, it didn't. The question is why? What happened? What did I do wrong so that linear gain was not doing its job? Well, it turns out it's not the fault of linear gain at all. It's something I overlooked in my setup, as I said. You ready to see what it is? It's dumb. Check this out. This luminance mix slider down here this defaults to a value of 100 whenever you create a new node, whenever you create a new project inside of Resolve. Watch what happens when I grab this luminance mix and I drop it to zero. Problem goes away instantly, instantly solved, right? Let's even go back to this shot that we were looking at at the beginning of this video and do the same thing. Luminance mix down to zero. Whoa, that like immediately solves the problem, right? So the question is why? What is luminance mix and why is that solving the issue that we're seeing when working in linear gain and getting artifacts with highly saturated colors? Here's what's going on. Let's talk about what luminance mix is to get a better grasp of what we're seeing. To do this, I'm gonna go over here to my primaries bars and we need to observe that even though we typically only think about a lift gamma gain or offset adjustment as adjusting red, green, or blue in our image, actually with offset, we are only adjusting red, green, and blue. But for lift gamma and gain, we think we're just adjusting red, green, and blue, but we're really adjusting four different things. Those four things are red, green, blue, and Y, or luminance. That's what this fourth bar and the leftmost position for each range represents. So what does luminance mix mean? Luminance mix simply means how much do we want to weight what I'm doing here against what I'm doing here. So check this out. If I go back over here to my first shot, and I move my luminance bar, my Y bar, up or down, I can brighten or darken my image without changing my individual red, green, and blue channels 
because my luminance mix is set to 100. That means that Resolve is paying just as much attention and giving just as much weight to what I do here as what I do with my red, green, and blue. Now watch what happens when I set my luminance mix to zero. How much influence, how much weight do you think Resolve will give to my Y or my luminance slider with that luminance mix set to zero? That's right, it's giving it zero, right? I can push this wherever I want. I'm never gonna see a change in the image because it's not being weighted at all. This, it turns out, is the behavior that we want when we are operating in the linear domain because we really truly want to adjust just the ratio of red to green to blue without weighting in this additional factor of luminance, okay? So that's why we're getting this artifact when we forget to set our luminance mix down to zero because in addition to whatever RGB adjustment we might be making, including a rather extreme RGB adjustment like this one that I'm doing here, Resolve is also trying to account for the luminance adjustment that we're making, or in this case, that we're not making. It's trying to keep the luminance level, even though we're making a big net change in amounts of red, green, and blue. So that's why we are gonna see this issue whenever we're working in linear and we're making bigger adjustments and there's already elements in the frame that are highly saturated. That's kind of like the recipe for producing this artifact is big adjustment and some sort of element in the frame that already is highly saturated in the direction that you are pushing. So we now know the solution. We now have some idea of why this works and why it breaks things in the first place. But the next question that comes is like, all right, great. So I got to remember to do that every single time I want to use this linear gain thing. That seems like a pretty high bar. That seems pretty easy to make the mistake that Cullen did in that previous video, right? Turns out we don't need to be perfect at this. We don't need to manually recall and remember to drop that down to zero every time. We've got two options that I want to show you here. Number one, this is the one that I use. This is the one that I normally have in place that I completely miss in the setup for uh, this particular project. And it's why I didn't even notice the problem because I'm not used to looking for luminance mixer problems when I'm working in linear game. In my project settings here, which I got to by going to file, project settings, and then I'm gonna go to my general options here. There's this nifty little checkbox here that says luminance mixer defaults to zero. That means exactly what you think it means. That means that in every node, in every grade, the default setting for the luminance mix is zero. And if you're like me, that's exactly what you want, not only for working in linear gain, but for making other adjustments as well. I personally don't like to operate on my Y or my luminance channel with my lift gamma or my gain or with my custom curves. And if that's you as well, you don't like to use your Y only adjustments, this is the easiest way to ensure you never run into these nasty artifacts like I did in that previous video. So I can simply hit save here. And now I've got a bulletproof insurance policy against that issue ever coming about. But let's say you do like to make Y only adjustments from time to time. There is another option. The other option is to leave this turned off. And when you're building your template node graph, check out my tool or my trees power grade that I have over here. Here's where my template node graphs live. These are simply unpopulated templates with labeled nodes that are set up to allow me to work the way that I want to that I haven't done anything in yet. So that at the very beginning of a project, I can paste this template node graph onto every single shot. And there will be no visual result, but every time I land on a new shot, I'll have the same starting framework of node tree to work from. If you're setting up a template node graph, which I highly recommend doing, all you need to do is ensure that in your balance node, your luminance mix is dropped down to zero manually. And now whenever you load up that template node graph, onto all of the shots in a new timeline, your luminance mix will automatically be set to zero. And once again, it's not occupying mental capacity for you to make sure, oh, did I get my luminance mix down in that shot? What about that one? What about that one? Did I miss one? It's much easier if this is on autopilot. So I hope that's a helpful breakdown of the issue that we ran into when I was seeing that artifact in that previous video where we were demonstrating balance using linear gain. I wanted to clear the good name of linear gain because I love it and the issue we were seeing has nothing to do with linear gain itself and instead has to do with the way that we set up our projects so that we can properly perform linear gain operations. And I hope as well we've had the chance to give you a couple of different options for how to make this a set it and forget it thing that allows you to easily avoid the mistake that I made in that previous video.